Hello everyone. Welcome back to the video series of the object oriented programming with the Java. Our today's topic for this particular video that is the control structure and looping statement in the Java. I am an instructor Mr. Ankit Patel. Welcome you all in the video series of the Java. So let's start with the our first topic that is the control structure. So what are the different control structure available in the Java? The first one that is the if else statement. Next that is the nested if statement. Next that is the if else if later. Next that is a switch case. So these are the control structure statement that I will explain you with the live programming. Same as in this particular video, I will also explain our next topic that is a looping statement. So what are the different types of loop? The first one that is a while loop. Next that is a do while loop. Next that is a for loop. And the lastly that is a enhanced for loop. So all this loop I will also explain with this live programming. So these are the two topic that is a control structure and the looping statement. I will explain all these with the programming. So let's start the programming session. Now in this session I will show you the example of the control statement and looping statement. But before I am starting the example of the control st uh, statement and the looping statement I will show you how to run a simple Java program. I have also I have already explained in my last video uh, that how to run the simple Java program what are the different steps. But in today's last session I will show you lively how to run a simple Java program. So let's start. So you can see I I am creating a simple class test and I am using a simply public strict void main. In main, I am using just passing the string of array and use system dot out dot println. Whatever you are writing in a println method, this will show you the output of our code. So I will save this file in my drive using the class name dot java because our class name that is a test here you can see that our class name is a test and the same name I have stored with the with this particular file. So now taste.java that is my file name because our class name is a taste that's I have to store this particular file as a taste. I have already file exists I am re replacing that particular file. So if you run this particular code just write down first of all you need to go through this path then just write down java c then name of the class dot java. If the there will be no any error in your code it will successfully compile then if you are run this particular file then this will show the output of our code. So this is the output of our program. So now so here this is a simple example of how to print a hello in a command screen. So now let us start with the control statement that is first statement that is our if statement. So what is the syntax of the if statement? So in if statement you need to write down the expression. So here that means you need to write down the condition. So here I am writing a simple program that check the given number the two number which number is maximum. So let's start with the I will taking a two number a and b. I am initializing the value a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 20. And just write down in a if condition if a is greater than b then simply the message is printed like this. Our maximum number like a plus is max. That means a is max. Else, I am just copying this line. Here what we write? Here b is maximum. So I am just replacing a with the b. So this is a simple example of the simple if statement, if else statement. So now again I will save this particular file and I am compiling this file and if you 
run this code what it will be 20 is a max because 20 here the b is a maximum so i am printing this value of b here so this is the example of the simple e file statement now next that is the nested if now in nested if case i use another variable like b is c is equal to 30 i am declaring a variable c now in a nested structure i am writing like again if a greater than b and in a loop if a greater than c then which number is maximum obviously here the a is maximum so here a is max now in a else in a else portion of this line in a else portion of this particular line which number is maximum c is a maximum now next same for the else here where, where why the else portion when the else portion if this condition is not satisfied then the else portion will be executed then the else portion is executed now in else again i am writing like this if b is greater than c then this will show you b is the maximum and in else portion of this line again i am just copying this particular line c is maximum so in our case in our case a b c out of these three number c is our maximum number so what will be the answer 30 is a maximum by using the nested if else statement you can see this code i am just writing if in the body of if again i am using a nested if that is if contain another if that is called as a nested if statement so if you run this file so what it will be print java c name of the file then java test 30 is a max so here this is the example of the nested if now if you were talking about if else if later you can also make this program with this uh, code again like if a greater than b i am using a just i am deleting this code and just write down the if condition if a greater than b and a greater than c then which number is maximum a is maximum then i am using a as if statement not a simple if not a nested if i am using a if else if later so here b is greater than a and b is greater than c then which number is maximum which number is maximum b is maximum and lastly else which number is maximum c is maximum the both the condition but what happened in if else if later if first condition is satisfied then it will execute only this line all this belowing code will be skipped automatically so now if you run this code again the output is remain same i am just clearing the screen now if you run this code first of all i am compiling the code now if you run this code 30 is maximum by using the if else if later so now this is example of a if else if later now if you are talking about the switch case i am just removing this line again and i am just using a case that is a switch case but in switch case you need to pass an integer form of argument i am passing just single a i am not using this here a and b so i am removing this variable b and c i am just passing the variable a is equals to 1 just make sure i am not passing any dynamic array value at a runtime i am just passing a static value because our today's session is only for the explanation of the if else if and uh, sorry the statement this is called as a control statement and the looping statement so i am not using a dynamic value so in a switch case you can see here you need to use a number of cases is there case one is there 
if the case one satisfy i'm just writing like this here system dot out dot print ln i'm just writing like case one then break treatment is there i am copying this case multiple time you can paste it over here like this like this i am just change the name of the value one here one to two two to three i'll also change this value here two and here three is there so now at the last the default case is there if all the all the matching case is not executed then the default case will be executed and in this particular case i am just write it down system dot out dot print ln default case no need to write down the break key here i am just write down the simply default case so now if you run this code obviously the output is printed as a case one only but if you change the value of variable a i will show you the output of this particular code if you compile this code and if you run this then this will print the case one now if you change this value a, a value become three so now here if you change this value you can see the output over here if you change this value and compile the program and run it again so now this will print the case 3 so here suppose if you are changing the value like 5 now there will is a no any matching case that is match with the 5 so it will obviously execute the default case and once again if you run this code it will print the default case so this is the use of the switch case now these are the different different control statements now our next topic that is a looping statement so what are the different types of loop while loop do while loop for loop and enhance for loop so i will show you the first example of the while loop so i am removing this particular line now i am declaring the simple variable n that is equals to 5 and i that is equals to 1 because i am using a while loop you need to initialize the variable before the condition statement so i am just write down the condition i is less than or equals to n and i am just printing like system dot out dot print ln i am printing the value i over here now you need to increment value of i here so if you run this code what is the advantage of the while loop or what is the advantage of the looping statement you are repeating this statement suppose if you want to print 100 1200 then rather than you are writing just system dot out dot print ln 1 system dot out dot print ln 2 system dot out dot print ln 100 then you can directly using the loop statement that is easy to use so if you run this code and this clearing this line if you run this code again then this will show the output sorry here is some print ln is there now if you run this particular code then this will show this result 1 2 3 4 5. same as a another loop that is a do while loop i will show you the example of the do while loop a do while loop it is an exit control loop so first we write down the do then in exit we are write down the condition that is i is less than or equals to n and the semicolon So if you run this code, then this will show you the output like one, two, three, four, five. So this is the example of the do while loop. The only difference between while loop and do while loop, do while loop is exit control loop and while loop it is an entry control loop. Now next loop that is a for loop. So I am just removing this line. You can see over here. I am just writing on the for because the for loop contain the three argument. So i is equals to one, i is less than or equals to n, and i plus plus. I am removing this increment decrement statement in the body, and I am removing the initialization statement. So now, if you run, I am just changing this value here. I am just write down the here i is equals to plus. So you can differentiate the 
output. So now if you run the code of the for loop, then this will show i is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the example of the while loop, for loop and the do while loop. Now next and the last loop that is the enhanced for loop. What is the use of the enhanced for loop? Mostly it is used for the in a array and string. I will show you what is enhanced for loop. So this is the example of the enhanced for loop. So now I have declared one array a is equals to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I am using the enhanced for loop. This is a very easy to use. Just write down the integer a colon a. So this loop is continue until there is an element in the array. And just write down the i as a in a system dot out dot printer. So this will show the element of the array. I will show you the output. So first of all, we compile with this code enhance loop dot sorry enhance loop dot Java and then run with the Java enhanced for loop. So you can see the output 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So this is the use of the enhanced for loop. So this is the last loop. So hope you understand the all the example of the today's session. So this is the end of the programming section. So thank you very much. If you have any doubt regarding this particular video, you can feel free to ask me. Thank you very much.